Kenny Porter, man. It's, I mean, <laughs> he just making his son look bad. He's making himself look ridiculous. Every interview, just stop talking. It becomes a point in time where you just need to shut up and take a step back. Sean, please, step up to your dad. Have a sit-down conversation with him. You know, and just say, look, Dad, it's over, okay? It's over. We come back stronger. I'm going to need to work on this. I'm going to need to work on that. Because unless you're fighting little small welterweights, this is going to keep happening. So all that, he, he tied me up stuff. He tied them up. He, he, he doing this, the referee, the commissions. Now you got the boxing commission that's going to be pissed off at you. Now you got the referee that's going to be pissed off at you. Because the referee actually did a good job. I felt that he allowed certain things to go on because Sean Porter was hitting behind the head. Now how was, if he was being held, how's he hitting behind the head all the time? Because the referee said work and get out. He let Sean have the opportunity to work and get out. He had one hand free. Didn't he? Or if he didn't, how was he hitting behind the head? Because he only grabbed one arm, he was free. That's why the referee didn't get in there. If you listen to the fight or watch the fight, he said work and get out. You got one arm free, work and get out. Now I know understand this is damage control by you. But the the thing with damage control and how it works is it doesn't need to be reiterated. Once you put it out there, it's out there, you're done with it. But you you don't want you think it doesn't hurt Sean because Sean isn't saying it and you're just saying it. No, it hurts Sean because he's the one that actually fights in the ring. Stupid. Oh, you wanna know Kenny Porter training? Oh here's Kenny Porter training. Stick, stick, stick! Going in work. <laughs> Do like this hit. Go. Do it, do it, do it. And then go. Kenny Porter train. Yeah, we lost the fight because we was excessively here. You know, he we went in there. I said, get in there and inside and work. And that's what he did. He went inside and work. And we didn't get no credit for it. We didn't get no credit. Yeah, now we gotta go over there. Now we, now we gotta go over there. Then we're gonna knock them out. We'll get over there. Yeah. Two plus two is twenty-two. <laughs> Here to our main event between Porter and Brooke. Nice shots there by the challengers. We go. Cal Bernstein sees the victory. Well, a big punctuation. Cal, now the blood is slowing again. Yeah, Brooke first entered that gym at the age of nine. Don't put that over. Brooke is, is putting up the pace with the jab and his punch count. He's uh, picking up the pace, and that's what I'd like to see, from especially the, the guy coming into his backyard. Brooke had a limited amateur career, having his first fight in the unpaid ranks at the age of 12, undefeated though as a professional, and facing the biggest and stiffest test of his career. Hands look free to me. In an IBF eliminator against former WBA welterweight champ Yuchislav Senchenko, good exchange. Watch ahead. Look, ahead. Go. See? Look, he got hands free to me. Got hands free to me. Let's talk about what was really going on in the fight. That people weren't talking about. You trying to take attention away from. See, this is what your boy was doing. What you worrying about, Kale Brook. And between the use of the head and the hitting behind the head with Porter, that's something Pat Russell's going to have to look at as well. What happened was your boy got a taste of that power, and he he was he knew, just like I said, he was going to know, he know now. But we're starting to see Porter on the outside a lot more than he was earlier. We'll see if that continues. Coming up on the final minute of the fifth round, Ruck keeping Porter at bay with the jab upstairs and then to the midsection. There's another jab. There's a right hand. So the. Slick boxer from Sheffield, Kel Brook. 
Staying away from the champion thus far, but now Porter closes the gap, goes to work on the body, and Ruck House is on the inside. Porter also is mixing up the jab to the body and the head, which is giving Porter... He's got one arm free. Oh, he ain't working. This is an important round for Kel Brook. He has stabilized this fight, I think, in many respects for free himself. Hand. Let him go. Let him go. Free hand. You got a free hand. Punch up. Stop. Right. Step out. Thank you. Take a step back. This is a rough and tough fight. Long distance one two combination executed by the challenger Kel Brook. Over the top, clubbing right hand by Porter again. Leads with his hand as a clutch of the belt. Leads with his hand. Ain't that what the man just said? But here's another thing about your damage control. You said in the corner, he's holding you, but it's your fault. You did that. Because he's grabbing you and holding you and nullifying you by holding you because you're not putting it together and going one side or the other. You keep coming in the middle with your body shots. That's from your mouth. So... After the fight, it was just all because Kale held him. That's why his face got like that. A moment ago, that's one foot quarter's not going to, or Cook's not going to land so much, but when he's able to land that jab like that, he's effective. Yeah, Cook very focused in the center of the ring, busy with the jab, staying at a distance. Damn! Able to weather whatever storm of strikes. Oh, oh. Back of the head, back of the head, back of the head. He also needs a counter shot because he can't just block on that. Uh oh. Oh. Inside, you'll see him use a three punch combination. That's the uppercut, a very important punch for him the left hook and the straight right. And that was toward the end of the round. We will wobble. Sean Porter. Like I said, this is not an attack on Sean. This is all Kenny Porter. Okay, Kenny Porter. Shut up.